This is One Broke Gamer Girl, and this is my review of Until Dawn for the PlayStation 4. I've been waiting to play this game since it came out way back in 2015. I was one of the ones that paid for this game during the holiday time of the year, and didn't get it for free this year when it was free for PlayStation Plus. That goes to show you just how huge my backlog is. Anyway, I'm not here to complain about my backlog, but to finally review a game that I've been waiting over two years to play, so on with the review. Until Dawn tells the story of eight high school slash college aged friends who are returning to their rich friend Josh's lodge a year after his two sisters went missing at the very same lodge. Each of the eight characters that you play will have some sort of impact on why Josh's two sisters went missing and it basically sets up most of the events for the actual meat of the game. Throughout the course of the game, which plays like one of those super cheesy horror movies that are geared towards teenagers, all eight friends will be terrorized by a psychopath as well as a mysterious Native American folklore creature called a Wendigo. As you get the chance to play all eight of the characters involved in the game, you'll make decisions as each causing either the death of one character or the character that you're actually playing. Do you have what it takes to keep all eight characters alive until dawn? Not really being a fan of horror games, this game seemed different and at the time kind of reminded me of the movie Cabin in the Woods, which is why I picked it up. It's funny actually because while I love horror movies, I really can't stand horror games. It's a weird combination, I know, but moving on, I thought this game had an interesting concept. While half of the group is being threatened by a psychopath, the other half is being threatened by the Wendigos. At some point, if they all live, they'll all be threatened by both the psychopath and the Wendigos, but that all depends on how you play the game. There's a whole story behind the Wendigos as well as the mysterious disappearance of Josh's sisters, Beth and Hannah, which play a big role as to why everyone is gathered at the lodge a year after they went missing. The breakdown of characters basically goes like this. You have Josh, who is grieving the disappearance and possible death of his two sisters while going through some of his own stuff. Matt and Emily, who are the typical jock slash spoiled rich girl combination. Mike and Jess, who are also a typical pretty boy, pretty dumb girl combination. Ashley and Chris, who are the typical unrequited, why can't these two people get to their shit together and be together instead of beating around the bush combination. And then there's Sam. Sam is the only one alone in this game. You'll get the chance to play each of these characters who have completely different personalities that you'll have to try and replicate as you play each of them. This plays a big part in the game, as a simple decision can change the way another character sees you for the rest of the game. It's a pretty interesting aspect of the whole story itself and really shapes the story. So how scary was this game actually? Not very scary actually. Don't get me wrong, there are a few jump scares which are the cheapest kind of scares to me that got me a few times, but other than that, the game was pretty tame. I thought it was going to be a lot scarier, but it just wasn't. So now the big question, how do I gauge my actual scare meter? I compare it to the original Silent Hill. This game had me actually screaming at points, and it was that game that completely turned me off from horror games because I hated being scared like that. This game didn't do that, so it really wasn't that scary. The playability for this game is a little wonky at times because if you think about it, it's basically a walking simulator with some quick time events thrown in there for good measure, along with decision making. You would think that just walking around and aiming a flashlight wouldn't be that hard, but sometimes in this game it is. I found myself running into walls, walking around in circles, and just not being able to control the character that I was playing all that well. This wasn't really all that great, and by the time it came around to having to play the game over and over again in order to get the platinum trophy, this became extremely annoying. Other than that, the quick time events worked perfectly and were really pinpoint accurate to where if you didn't do something in the time given, it could mean the death of your character you were playing or the death of another character. Other than that, the game ran bug and glitch free, which was just the icing on the cake. Don't move sections. Ever wonder what the light bar on your PlayStation 4 controller was for? Basically for games like this where it detects your movement. There are a lot of don't move portions in this game, and a hell of a lot is riding on them. There's only one problem with this. It doesn't actually work all that well. The calibration is kind of off when it comes to this mechanism, and I found myself holding completely still during a lot of these segments, only to have the game say that I moved. You would think that 
going back and playing again, knowing where the don't move sections are, would help so that you could put the controller down so you aren't actually holding it. But guess what? Even with the controller on a flat surface, it still picked up that there was movement when there was none. After a while, this became annoying and turned into a don't move, don't breathe, don't blink, don't do anything moment, and hope to hell you didn't mess up. I would be lying if I said I didn't enjoy the graphics for this game, but I truly did. They were some of the best graphics that I had seen in a while, and especially for a new IP. Each character was based off an actual character as they went the Beyond Two Souls route for this game, and it worked perfectly and played to the developer's advantage. Not only were the facial animations great, but so were the graphics for the surrounding area. You really felt like you were on a mountaintop lodge, and there was a lot of attention paid to small details around the lodge. The graphics were seriously one of the highlights of this game. Finish this game and do everything it has to offer in order to get yourself 19 trophies, including a platinum trophy. I have to say that this game did feel a little cheap with the trophies, although they were all high-value trophies with 1 bronze, 5 silver, 9 gold, and 1 platinum trophy. I felt like there could have been more trophies for this game, but I also feel like getting all of the trophies was enough work that 19 of them was just fine. This game requires multiple playthroughs in order to do random things like kill everyone, keep everyone alive, kill only certain characters, make some hard choices, and collect all of the collectibles. It's actually a lot more work than I had originally expected for this game, and after I was finished, I was basically burnt out on this game and just wanted it to end. There is no multiplayer for this game, and it seriously doesn't need it. This is about your experience playing the game and about the choices that you make while playing it. I have to say that I really enjoy these games that don't tack on multiplayer because they think it will sell more copies. Some games are just made for one person, and this is one of those games. Overall, I give this game a 3.5 out of 5. Here's what's great about it. The story for this game is an interesting one, and the first playthrough of this game will keep you on your toes as you try to figure out what's going on at the lodge while trying to figure out what happened to Beth and Hannah. Also, playing eight characters is done flawlessly throughout the game, and the transition between playing the characters is an easy one. Not to mention, each character is based off an actual actor slash actress, and the graphics are just amazing. It really brings the whole next generation thing to a new level, and even two years later, the graphics hold up a lot better than some AAA games that are out there today. Not to mention, your decisions really do matter in this game and turn into life or death situations for the characters that you're playing. Here's what's not so great about this game. The playability of this game is a little wonky. Walking should have been one of the easier parts of this game, but I found myself on more than one occasion running into walls and walking around in circles because things wouldn't operate right. The don't move sections felt like they were calibrated incorrectly, resulting in some super frustrating moments because seriously, if the controller is down on a flat surface, it's not moving, yet the game picked it up, that there was some kind of movement. Not to mention, this game makes the trophy hunters play through multiple times, and after the first initial playthrough, the original storyline spark is gone, and you're stuck with seeing the same thing over and over again, which quickly becomes annoying and boring. I have to say, when it came to review this game, I was a little mixed on how I would actually review it. I really did enjoy my first playthrough and felt like it was a great game, despite the few hindrances that occurred, like the wonky movements and the whole don't move sections. Having to go back and play over and over again to get every single trophy, though, kind of ruined the game for me and made it that much less enjoyable. I would say that this is a good game if you aren't a trophy hunter because it's one of those games you can play once and see how things end up and be good with that. If you're a trophy hunter, beware because while you might like this game after one playthrough, but by the time that you're finished, you'll be a little bitter about the whole thing.